Hello and welcome to this short guide on transitioning to a postgraduate level of study from us at the Academic Skills Centre. If you study before at undergraduate level, you may be wondering how studying at postgraduate level might be different. Well, the good news is that much of postgraduate study already builds on undergraduate study. However, at postgraduate level, there's an even greater emphasis on independent, self-directed study, with possibly less guidance given by tutors. This also means that managing your time and staying motivated is even more important. You'll also be expected to engage with a wide breadth and depth of research and evidence, and of course, think critically. This will consist of really evaluating and critiquing ideas and information, developing a strong, critical academic voice. It may also be that a major research project or dissertation is undertaken towards the end of your postgraduate course. There's no doubt that you will have already developed many invaluable key skills during previous studies or via work or other life experiences. All of these will help you with your postgraduate studies. Equally, Having the motivation to continue on to postgraduate level in itself shows you have the qualities and attitude needed for studying successfully. Here are some more examples of key skills you might need, such as reflection, presentation skills, digital skills, evaluation skills, collaboration, and the list could go on. Consider if there are any study skills you might want to start developing further. The Academic Skills Centre will be able to support you with this. At postgraduate level, managing your own time and workload is going to be crucial. Organisation will help with all of this. So as early as you can, familiarise yourself with practical things such as any course guidelines, your timetable, online tools, where key rooms and buildings are, and how to use and access library resources. Plan ahead, make a note of when all your key deadlines for assignments and assessments are, and check if there are any particular pinch points where you might be busy, both in terms of study and your life outside of university. Then work backwards from there and see what steps you need to start doing in order to meet them. If possible, it can be good to develop a routine of when you will be studying and of course when you will not be studying too to ensure you have a healthy work-life balance. If you're living with others it might be useful to share your set study times with them so they know when to give you the space and time you need. With greater independence in your studies you will need to stay self-motivated. Sometimes this can be challenging when we have lots of different things going on, so some strategies to help with this might include the following. Breaking any tasks you have down into smaller, manageable goals. For example, rather than trying to tackle an entire assignment, break it down into each single step, one at a time instead. Before you know it, you'll have made great progress. Identify what tends to distract you most and try to reduce or even remove this as much as possible. This might be as simple as putting your phone in another room for a while. If you're struggling to think or get started on something, try a change of scenery. It might just mean sitting somewhere else or going for a quick walk to give you a new perspective. This can really help to unlock your thoughts. Or you can even try something called the Pomodoro Method. This is where you study in short focus bursts of 25 minutes before having a five minute break. You do this three or four times and then have a longer break. This can help you to maintain concentration over a much longer length of time in total. Critical thinking is another vital skill at postgraduate level. You will hear the phrase used often. But what does it actually mean? It really means engaging with different information and ideas and evaluating and questioning them, deciding whether you perhaps agree or disagree and whether they're convincing and reliable. Do they support your argument or findings? It also means seeing research and evidence in its wider context. How does it all fit together? How does one argument or study connect, build on 
agree or disagree with another. It's important also to show an awareness of different viewpoints and possibilities, as well as often reflecting or analysing our own experiences. Engaging with a broad range of information and evidence is going to be key as part of this. So to help you with this, explore the library and its resources. You can search for all of the library's resources via either the library catalogue, which is called Find It at Beham, or your specific library subject guides. For guidance on referencing, visit Cite Them Right Online. And don't forget, the university's libraries offer so much more as well, including study spaces, group study rooms, wellbeing collections, PCs, loanable laptops, printers, and much more. When you engage with information and evidence, it's important to have a questioning and purposeful approach. So always try to identify what the overall argument or conclusion of research is, what are its methods or sources, and how does it compare with others? Evaluate it too. Can you see any problems with this research? Are there limitations or assumptions made? What are its strengths? What new information does it add to your field? Are there any gaps or ways for future research to explore this further? And then, of course, you'll need to clearly communicate all of these ideas, arguments and research. This might be through, for example, speaking, writing, presenting, visuals and more. Usually this involves demonstrating the quality rather than quantity of your ideas, choosing and using and crucially evaluating relevant evidence to support them. It means being clear and concise in what you say, aware of your audience and purpose and using a clear structure. And really importantly, it's doing all of this to build strong, logical and easy to follow arguments. In terms of how we approach our postgraduate studies, what else might help us to succeed? Well, it can really help to have what's called a growth mindset. This means accepting that despite some things being more challenging than others, it's still always possible to learn, adapt and improve. Maintaining your curiosity and not being afraid to ask questions is also going to be key. University gives you the space and opportunity to try lots of different things, so do take opportunities where you can. They may or may not always work, but importantly, you can learn from them. And digital skills are, of course, more important than ever. So to find advice about digital tools and skills which may be useful for your studies, you can visit the Digital Skills Key resources from the Academic Skills Centre web pages. There is so much support available for you as and when you might need it. So never be afraid to ask and make the most of it. Use your lecturer's office hours and any support from personal tutors or wider services such as the Academic Skills Centre, the Wellbeing Teams, Careers Network and the Guild. And don't forget, of course, to support each other too. Learning is much easier and more enjoyable with the support of others, whether it's your classmates, your friends, societies, your family or beyond. Finally, your studies will be so much easier if you're looking after yourself first and foremost. So always prioritise your health and well-being. Connect with others as much as you can and ask for help and support if you ever need it. Being at university is a really special, unique time in life. So enjoy and embrace it. We hope this video has been a useful introduction to learning at university. The Academic Skills Centre can also support you in your studies with a wide range of academic and digital skills. Explore our website to book a one-to-one -one confidential appointment with a friendly academic skills advisor, explore our online resources or discover upcoming workshops and drop-ins. We hope to see you soon.